Sometimes, even the simplest things can become incredibly complex, and sometimes even the most complex things can be explained simply. There is no way for us to approach the complexities and nuances of this particular case that would do justice to either side, because the webs woven by both good and bad actors on either side of the scale have removed the ability to objectively come to a conclusion, one way or another, that is beyond a reasonable doubt. For that reason, we leave you to take the information both presented and made available and come to your own conclusions. Our story takes place in 2014 and starts on June 18th in the capital of Oklahoma State, Oklahoma City. It's around 2 a.m. and the Oklahoma City Police Force is finishing their shift change at the Spring Lake Station. For some officers, the workday is just beginning and for others, just ending. One officer in particular that's starting his journey home is Daniel Holtzclaw. All is seemingly normal, with Officer Holtzclaw taking his regular route home, driving north on North Prospect Avenue in his assigned take-home patrol vehicle. Something strange happens just minutes after leaving the station, though. Before crossing Northeast 50th Street, his vehicle's GPS system loses connection, seemingly having lost all power. In short order, it would be discovered that the disconnection was intentional and caused by the only person in the vehicle at the time, Officer Daniel Holtzclaw. This was a major breach of policy, not only because this removes the ability to locate the department's property and employee, but also for officer safety. Holtzclaw's intentional powering off of the GPS was such an egregious violation that this one action alone raised exponentially more suspicion towards him. Suspicion that, at its roots, was fueled by what would happen just moments later. Even with a disabled locator, there was no question of where Holtzclaw and his now off-the-radar patrol vehicle would end up. On the corner of North Lincoln Boulevard and Northeast 50th Street, only a few blocks from where he had powered off his GPS, Holtzclaw would perform a traffic stop on a red Pontiac Grand Am. The driver was Jenny Liggins, a 57-year-old black woman. Both Liggins and Holtzclaw's statements matched on some basic facts, but they would each recall vastly different experiences and details. Holtzclaw would state that he suspected an intoxicated driver after allegedly witnessing the vehicle swerve as it was approaching the traffic lights at the intersection. The traffic stop lasted roughly 15 minutes, with Holtzclaw stating that he performed standard checks and searches for drugs, weapons, and open alcoholic containers. After confirming that Liggins was not impaired, he releases her without any citation or warning issued, telling her that he will escort her back to her destination. Holtzclaw would continue on Interstate 44 North as Liggins merged onto Interstate 44 West, choosing to abandon the plan of escorting her and opting to go home instead. Upon further questioning about the details of this traffic stop, it was revealed that Holtzclaw did not report the encounter to police dispatch, did not run a records check on Liggins, and even had completely logged off of his computer. All of this was in addition to having disabled the locator in his vehicle. These admitted truths are critically important, especially when comparing the details of Holtzclaw's recollection with Liggins. Excluding departmental policy violations, the interaction between Holtzclaw and Liggins based on Holtzclaw's words seemed to be fairly standard procedure. What did Liggins' timeline include that Holtzclaw's didn't? What happened during that traffic stop that would escalate into having not only the event in question come under scrutiny, but Daniel Holtzclaw as a whole? This is the interrogation of Daniel Holtzclaw. Welcome to our domain. Now, what's your first name? Daniel. Daniel. Okay. Daniel, just have a sit in here. Okay. And you, see, you, like you got a piss or anything? You can have a sit there. That's probably more. I, I could hold it. I'm not. A, not a, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. All right. I'm gonna run right on out. Uh, whatever's more comfortable, man. Look up. That'll work. While we fast forward, let's take a moment to thank this video's sponsor, June's Journey. Get ready to travel back in time to the glitz and glamour of the 1920s in June's Journey, a thrilling free-to-play hidden object mystery game. 
you'll become the detective tasked with solving the murder of your sister and unearthing your family's dark secrets. As you search for hidden objects and unravel the clues, you'll be drawn deeper into a captivating detective story full of twists and turns. Featuring a diverse cast of characters and a mystery that will keep you guessing until the very end, June's journey is not to be missed. Now I have to admit, finally finding the last clue on an especially tricky level is so, so satisfying. It's my absolute favorite feeling. So put on your detective hat and get ready for a journey full of excitement and intrigue. June's Journey is free to download and is available on Android, iOS, and PC via Facebook games. And just by simply trying June's Journey, you'll be helping Morbid Curiosity out tremendously. I know you're morbidly curious, so don't wait any longer. Click on the link in the description and start your journey to solve the mystery today. I was going to say there's a chair. Uh -huh. I was going to say there's a chair. No, right that I had uh, back surgery okay. a year ago. Rocky's coming. The okay. here go. And I had a back fusion. Oh, this is the only chair I can sit in. I don't Does know what. Your back support? It does. Well, no, it gives. It's um, it's very giving. I'm turning this off because I don't want this back in this. And not to be yucky but it's low back where my back fusion is and I can put my butt right there mm -hmm. so my tailbone's not getting extra pressure on it. I don't know. It, it, I can't sit in one of those. It'll kill me. Okay. Rocky's coming, mm -hmm. but I'm going to do this while, and he may walk in here in a minute and okay. get this done. Um, now I know you're an officer and I know you've seen these a thousand times right. and you've read them yourself. Right. You still ask me any questions if you have one. Right. Okay. Don't be embarrassed of that. Right. Okay. I think I'm already embarrassed. Why are you embarrassed? <laughs> why, the, tell me why you're embarrassed. The station deal, so. Nobody. Well, I mean, there's I mean, rumors flying. Everyone. I know. <laughs> and we tried to do that as kind of quietly as we could. And that's why we took you out the front and stuff. But. This is going to make the rumors go away. Okay. Okay. For you. Right. The rumor tomorrow is going to be on somebody else. Right. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's get them off of you mm -hmm. and get them on to somebody else and get this over with. Okay. Okay. All right. You have the right to remain silent. While Holtzclaw has his Miranda rights read to him, two noteworthy things stand out. The first is the jovial attitude of the investigators. Some believe that this is because of Holtzclaw and Detective Kim Davis sharing some common ground, that is, being a part of the Oklahoma City Police Department. However, it is more likely that Detective Davis is keeping the mood casual for the sake of the interrogation, which will be made more apparent by her later use of childish language. By removing the appearance of severity, acting as if this is just something that they need to get through quickly, Detective Davis is hoping to get Daniel to speak with less reservation. Secondly, some proponents of Holtzclaw's case believe that his willingness to speak even after being read his rights is evidence supporting his innocence. Innocent and guilty people speak to police regularly. Daniel's willingness to speak to detectives is nothing more than that, a willingness to speak to detectives. As far as his motive behind speaking to detectives, we'll allow you to decide as the interrogation progresses. Having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to me and us? At this time, without an attorney. Yes. Present. Okay. Right. Yes. Right there. Read this out loud. <clears throat> I've read the statement of my rights and understand what my rights are. I'm willing to make a statement and answer questions at this time. I do not want an attorney present at this time. I understand and know that what I'm doing, no promises or threats may have been made to me, and no pressure or force of any kind has been used against me. Agree? Agree. Sign, print. That's too funny. I haven't met anybody else that writes left-handed. <laughs> it kind of creates a problem when you're on a traffic stop, doesn't it? Because you're writing and holding book. your ticket book in this hand and your and gun hand doesn't right. bother you. Well, that's because you're huge. <laughs> <laughs> What's your commission number? 1782. I masturbate right and left. Okay. <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> Um, I think I do that left-handed. Very good. Well, I'm dominant. You are? Yes. <laughs> The odd interaction you just heard was real. Once again, there are two factors that are likely emotion. 
Firstly, Detective Davis and Detective Gregory, who is off screen and sitting in front of Holtzclaw, are sex crimes detectives. It is likely that they have been desensitized towards topics that people would normally only have in private, and as such, seem unintentionally crude with their conversations. However, it is also just as likely that this is a planned behavior. By introducing the discussion of highly personal matters into the conversation early, they can attempt to break down the barriers or discomfort surrounding it, making it seem like no big deal and that they're just having a casual, although crude, conversation between cohorts, as opposed to it being the very serious interrogation that it really is. Okay, look, just like I, we talked in the car. Mm -hmm. uh, you haven't heard any rumors? No, I haven't heard any rumors. So, you so were, when I walked in the station, I see Captain lean over, not unusual. I got Captain Clifton, hey, but then I, I've seen you in the cabin, I've never seen you. And so. I'm a nobody. But mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything. Okay. So I'm just looking at things. You, you had said, and we told you that there was a traffic stop. Right. That somebody made some allegations against an officer. Right. They don't know the officer's name, none of that. But, and you said that you made a traffic stop after work, yeah. but you didn't call it in. I didn't call it in. Where was that? It was about Northeast 50th and Lincoln just to the west. Okay. Tell me about that stop. I was going westbound on Northeast 50th, probably a block just east of uh, Lincoln. I see a red Grand Prix, or Grand Dam, in my right lane, and the outside lane, I'm in the inside lane. The car swerves. And so at the time I'm thinking, okay, it's a, probably a drunk person or maybe a guy excited because they saw a cop. So I kind of fall behind it, kind of drifting just a little bit, not crossing lane lines, nothing crazy. So I light it up because it, at first the traffic violation I saw at first when it swerved, um, that was just west of uh, Northeast 50th and Lincoln. And then made contact, it was a black female, um, asked for license and insurance. Um, stated that she didn't have insurance, gave me an ID. At the time, I'm like, do you have a valid insurance or a valid license? She said, no, I told her, I just got off work. I mean, <laughs> what's the deal? You know, why, why are you swerving? And she says, um, I'm just trying to go home to Ann Arbor-ish on the Northwest side to see your daughter or something like that. Um, so I asked, is there anything on board as far as the vehicle? Is it okay if I search your vehicle and whatnot? She said, the only thing that's inside there is a Kool-Aid cup. I'm like, is there anything inside of that Kool-Aid? Is there liquor or anything inside that Kool-Aid? She's no. I'm like, okay, is there anything else inside there? She says there's pills. I'm like, is that the only thing? And then, so I said, can you have permission to search your car? She says, yes, I go inside the car, I see a lot of pills. But, um, what kind of pills? I didn't really. Like scattered pills or in a bottle? She said pills? it was hydrocoding pills, but I just quickly glanced, looked at it, and I think I saw her name on the prescription bottle, so I didn't. Oh, so it was a bottle? Right. Uh, okay. There were several bottles in her purse. And then, so at that time, I just returned back to her. It's like, um, okay, I saw your pills, I didn't see any alcohol. I sniffed the drink, didn't smell any alcohol, and the Kool Aid. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm just off work, I'm tired. Um, get your license taken care of. Just mine. So she didn't have a driver's license? She didn't have a driver's license, and I was just like, go to DPS, uh, Department of Public Safety on King, get that taken care of, and I cut her loose after that. Okay. Then where'd you go? That went straight home. Okay. Um, do you remember her name? It was on the I don't. Prescription. I don't. Okay. okay. Um, do you make traffic stops normally after work? I don't, but in that case, I. Solar swerve and whatnot, so I. I mean, me, I don't. Felt. <laughs> I know. I mean, people I know, co cops say that right. is have a you know whatnot <laughs> right. to have the vision, whatever. But I felt like I needed to make that traffic stop. Okay. How was she? Was she respectful? Was she? She not? felt like was she, she was nervous and whatnot, and I'm like, why are you nervous? And she was even crying. I'm like, why are you crying? Why are you nervous? Whatnot? And she's just like, I, I don't know. I, just nervous because you're a cop and I got pulled over. I'm like nothing you had to be nervous about. And I told her, I'm like, I don't really want to take you to jail for no SDL or anything. I just got off work. I'm tired. So with my officer, um, courtesy or whatnot, I said, I'd go get that taken care of tomorrow. 
Put her on her way. And you don't have to. Fix, I'm not going to sit here and go, why didn't you right. take her to die? I can well, care that's, less. That's no, I don't care. Um, was she wrong? Did you think she was drunk? I think she was. I think she was. She drank, but I don't think she. With my experience, I don't think she was past the legal limit. Right. Right. So. So, I mean. And that's what I asked her too. Is like, with your pain medicines of hydrocodone, everyone knows, everyone knows that you drink with that it maximizes the effects. So, I asked her that. She said no. But, I, when she was in the back of my car, and when I was in the front car. And the driver said I could smell it off of her, but I don't think she was still past the legal limit. Okay. Okay. So you got her out of the car? Yes. Okay. Um, and put her in the back of your car? Yes. Okay. Um, any problems there? No, she was cooperative. Didn't give me any problems or whatnot. Okay. And then you searched, did you run her through Unit 800? I didn't. You didn't? Mm -hmm. So, did you run her on your MDT? No, I didn't. All my, all my stuff as far as that, because I didn't even call it in and say I was a traffic stop, my computer was off and everything as well. Did you shut it off after I just shut it off, work? yeah. On the way, on 50th, I turned it off right before the traffic stop, basically. Okay. And where did you pick her up, 50th and what about? 50th and Lincoln, just to the west. But no, where'd you see her swerve, kind of? I'd say a block just to the east of uh, Lincoln and 50th. Okay. Did she pull over right away? She was in the right lane and the outside lane when I saw her swerve. And so she saw a police car right there, and so she kind of did what everyone does, slow down, kind of, okay, is he going to pull me over or not? And then I lit her up about 50th and Lincoln, past the intersection to the west. Okay. When you um, when you put her in your car, did you pat search her? Uh, when I came here, I was like, lift up your shirt. Is there anything on you, anything as far as your waistband or anything like that? She said no. And then I put her in the vehicle and went from there. Did, did your hands go on her at all? I backhanded, I backhanded her on as far as the side. Where on her body? Tell me. You backhanded her waist, her waist, and the back portion. I didn't touch her butt or anything, but the back portion and the waist. And then she lifted it up like right here. And there's nothing. Did she lift it up like this? No. Okay. So she never, like, went, whoo, nothing no. exposed her breasts no. or anything like that? She asked me if I was like, no, it's okay. She asked you if it, you want to search me. I'm like, no, it's okay. Uh, so she never like put her hands on the car and you. Ch -ch 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 -ch. No, no. Okay. Okay. Um, when you where was she positioned or standing when you back when you did your the it back was of your about hand on her? Probably the right front right fender of the of my patrol vehicle. But did you, was she facing you or was she turned? No, she was facing away from me. And you just kind of did it like yeah, this. Yeah, back then, yes. Okay. Did your hand go on her butt or anything? No, that's not what I'm saying. It was, it was the hip, the side, not the butt section. What about right here? No. You didn't? No, I didn't. They can tuck a gun and That's right why I asked to lift it up. Oh, so she just kind of showed yeah. you her belly? Right. Okay. Then you talked to her for a little bit. Right. In the, well, you, after you searched her, you right. put her in the back of the car. Right. Then we used to always kind of keep the door open and talk when they're not like combative or anything. Did right. you talk to her and get information then while she was in the back of your car? Right. I talked to her for a little bit just as far as what's inside the vehicle. Can I consent to search your vehicle? Um, is there anything in that Kool-Aid? She said no. Um, just talking to her. What's the deal? Why are you driving late at 2 o'clock at night? You know, Why did you swerve? Um, so she's going to Ann Arbor over on the northwest side to visit her daughter, I believe. So. Then you went out and searched her car? After she gave me consent to search her car. How long, you think? I did a quick search, to be honest with you. I didn't. I looked under the seat, boom, sniffed the, sniffed the juice, whatever she's had, and I didn't smell alcohol on it. Went through her purse, like she said, there's there pills in it, looked at it real quick to see if their name was there, and that was basically it. Okay, then when you went back to her, mm -hmm. what happened? When I went back to her, I was like, okay, I didn't smell any alcohol on your, your car and your juice thing, and I'm like, what's the deal? Are you really drunk or not? And she's like, no, I'm just trying to go back home. And at that time, I was like, okay. But I'll go ahead and follow you. I said, I'm not going to take you to jail. I'm tired. I'm not going to take you to jail. I'll go and follow you. And let's go back to 44. And you head westbound on 44. So that's what we did. Did you follow her? Actually, she when I went behind her and we got in the car, she took forever. And I started getting annoyed. So I just do you turned it. And I went ahead and I saw her in the back view of my rear view mirror. And she was following a 44, but then I took off going northbound on Broadway extension.
Well, she took 44 to go west. So you were able to see her do that? Yes. And go. And then when you did you lose her when you got on Broadway? When I went to northbound on Broadway and she went 44 to west. Okay. Okay. Holtzclaw has recalled the events of that traffic stop, just as we covered in the beginning of this video. The question we poised at the end was, what could Janie Liggins, the woman that Holtzclaw pulled over, had said that was so drastically different to warrant an investigation? Now, we will start to uncover some of those differences. All right. Well, she's, it, it sounds like this is the lady, I mean, this is the deal where she's the complaining party. Okay. Okay. And she's making some sexual allegations, obviously, because sex crimes is working it. Right. What did she say? Well, was there anything, an accidental touch, a anything? If she thought it I, when I passed her, Drew, but I, there was nothing as far as I felt like I would do anything as far as sexual or anything like that. For my safety, I just checked to see if the weapons or anything. And make and it, I, to make clear, I didn't, didn't touch her butt, but the waist side and whatnot. If you would like me to do it, for me to show you. <laughs> no, and I'm, fi I'm fine with it, and you have every right to do that. Right. She's saying that you made her lift up her shirt, and she, and when she lifted up her shirt, she exposed her breasts. No, no. Did you ever see I her asked breasts? her, is there, I asked her, is there anything inside your bra? And she said, no. So I was like, okay. And she said, you want me to show you? And that's all the time I said, no. No, you don't need to do that. She said that, she said, do you want, she said she was doing this. When you said, is there anything inside your bra? And she was going, no, I don't have anything like that. Did she do that? Yeah, she did, but I didn't look or anything like, like that. Right. And then she was like, do you want me to show you? I was like, no. She said when she said, do you want me to show you? You said, yeah, and she went, woo -hoo. No, I didn't. But could she have been, woo -hoo, flashing you? And right. now you don't want to tell me because you're afraid no, you're going to get in trouble? No, when I told her no, I said no. Then she didn't go, yeah, no. you know, because sometimes drunk girls are... Having a good time. Yeah, right. and, and no. partying down. And let's face and it. I've already heard stories about officers people want, and whatnot. They so want officers want, for hubbies want, so or I whatever. No. And, or, I said no. But you could have said no. But I'm asking you if she flashed you anyways. I didn't see her. I didn't, didn't see, see her no breasts. Boobies? I didn't see her breasts. Okay. What about pants? Nothing in her pants as far as that concerned. She was wearing tight jeans. So she said she pulled them down. I didn't see it. You didn't see her pulling down? I didn't see her pulling down pants. Could she have done it when you were up searching the car? She could have. I didn't Did have she her, have them on? I didn't have her handcuffed or anything. When you came back to the car and got her out were her pants fastened were they yeah everything they was were still, up and everything was still intact so you never everything. saw her pull her pants down no i didn't why do you think she's making this up i don't know did you write her a ticket i didn't i let her go and actually i said i want to arrest you for your no sdl trying to figure out why she'd say that i mean i could see her saying it if you wrote her a ticket because she's pissed off right Detective Davis brings up one of the most pressing circumstances surrounding the case. What possible reason could there have been for Liggins to lie? She wasn't taken to jail or even arrested. She did not receive a ticket or summons. She was let go with a warning that was solely verbal and unentered into police databases. At the time, Liggins stood to gain nothing. If her story was fabricated, why would she do that? Now, make it quite clear, if you saw her boobs, I don't care if she's flashing you. I did not see you her You did not breasts. see her boobies? No, I did not see her breasts. Is she saying you shined your light on her? I did not see her breasts. Where do you keep your flashlight? The left side right here, right down my radio. Did you have your flashlight out on the traffic stop? I did. When she was going like this, did you have your I flashlight on her? I didn't like that. But I, as I'm out on the radio, like this, I have it right or position over us, but I didn't. Right, but did you have it on her when you're talking to her so you can see her? Just I mean, was it her. on her when she goes like this? Maybe she could have right. construed to see, it. to see her inside the vehicle. Was the dome light on? The dome light was not on. It doesn't come on? I don't know how. Does that come on when you open your back door? Mm. It's been too long since I've been in a scout car. I can't recall, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't, th I don't think the on? back, I don't think it does. Oh. As far as the dome okay. light. I'm just trying to figure out how long do you think you were on that traffic stop 
I don't think it was an excess of over a, just a regular speed. <sighs> 15 minutes at most, just like a regular traffic stop. Nothing as far as more. About 15 minutes. How long were you with her? How long of that 15 minutes do you think was searching her car? Where she's, maybe she's sitting in the back seat. Like I said, that quick search probably at max, maybe a little bit over five minutes, maybe like five minutes if. So you're with her for 10 minutes? Talking to her, yes. Did it take a while to get her to consent to search or what? 10 minutes a long time. She was nervous and she was crying and stuff and I told her not to Did be she nervous. say why she was crying? She says police officer and whatnot. And I'm just nervous because I got stopped by a police officer. So I'm like, calm down, everything's fine. And then so I think maybe with the fact that she had no SDL, maybe she was nervous as well too. And then so I went to the search and it wasn't that, it was a quick search like I said before. It wasn't in detail, pulling up carpet. It was a quick search. Because you were just ready to go home? I was ready to go home. Did you go home and go straight to bed? I went home straight to bed. Okay. Think of anything yet? Mm. Well, I think that was pretty good. Wasn't that pretty easy? Hey, we got to do this. Okay. Okay, if you don't mind. It's, I got to take your, your buckles. Okay. Remember doing that in the... That's fine. All right. Did we, did we buckle swap anybody in the academy? I don't. As a demonstration? Yeah. I'll let your name there because I don't even know how to spell it. I can how do you say your name? Daniel Holtzclaw. Holtzclaw. What is that? It's uh, German. Can hey, you speak that. German? Uh, no, I can't. Oh. Hey, read that out loud to me. It's, yeah. I, Daniel Holtzclaw, after having been advised of my right not to have a, a search made of my body, here and after mentioned without a search warrant, and my right to refuse to consent to search a search, to such a search, hereby authorize Rocky Gregory, uh, detective of the Oklahoma City Police Department, to conduct a complete search of my body located at 71 Colcord, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Officers are authorized by me to, to take uh, from my body samples of swabs from my body which they may desire. This written permission is being given by me to the above named police official voluntary uh, and without threats of promises of any kind. Basically, you're giving buckle swab, swabs on, of your own free will. Okay. okay. We, we do this as part, part of it. See, this ain't so bad, huh? <laughs> well, I've never had this done, so. Right. Say, uh, uh, there we go. And you get a free teeth cleaning with your first time. You, right. you won't go none, though. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to have one more round. Yeah. Well, I have a couple more questions. All right. All right. Well, what time is it on your watch? I turned my phone off. So I've got uh, four fifty. Sorry, 447. So do you usually do traffic stops on what home or what, what was? I don't, like I said that? before, I, I really, rarely don't. I usually try to get home because I'm tired of them. Well, sure. and the, are you a big DUI worker? When I first started coming out, I did. But I not really at the end now. Honest, I usually, if I see somebody swarming, I whoop the other way. And that's a little officers do too, so. Well, Daniel, this is this is kind of one of the things that uh, we kind of bring you in here to right. see how truthful you are. Right. Now, you need to kind of, kind of think of a few different things here. Okay. Okay, we pulled up a lot of video around that area okay. after these allegations. Okay. In what could be one of potentially many missteps for the investigators, Detective Rocky Gregory mentions that there's a surplus of video surveillance in the area in question. This isn't a lie because there is some video surveillance, but it's important to remember that this is also the same area that Holtzclaw patrols. It would be logical to assume that officers are aware of where security cameras are located on a building, and even more so of one who's looking to commit a crime. True, there is footage of the traffic stop, but given the angle and quality, it does not bolster either side's argument. Okay, she also have a SANE exam, which you know what that consists of. Right. There's a reason why we wanted your buckles. Okay. Okay. 
Now, I mean, we can go through a couple different things mm -hmm. of why we've got you in here, but you sure there's nothing you want to? Nothing. So if we go off the video and watch that, right. you're still going to stick with your story. Yes, sir. If we go off DNA? DNA as well. Should we show you the video? If yes. You, you do want to see it? Do I? Yes. Holtzclaw pushes back against the investigators, asking to see the video in question, which they know shows nothing. So there's nothing that... You Everything that I recall of that night is what I, what was I asked and everything, that's what happened. If I, have I maybe not asked enough questions? I think everything covered as far as that. Detective Davis narrows in on Holtzclaw's answer, I've answered everything that was asked of me, when he's asked if she needs to ask more questions. This answer that Holtzclaw gave gives the impression, intended or not, that there is more to the story, but the right questions need to be asked in order to uncover more information. Detective Davis responds with heavy pressure. Do you recall putting your penis in her mouth? I don't. Would you recall that if you did it? If I did it, yeah. Okay. Well, I think you really, in all honesty, you need to really double think about this. I mean, I, I gotta be honest with you, it doesn't look really good. Okay. Okay. I mean, in what you originally thought, Detectives just don't roll up in there for no reason. Right. Okay. And we just didn't pick you out. out. Okay. Right. I mean, there's a whole lineup there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's definitely enough here to bring you in here to start questioning you. Right. Okay. We knew you were on that stop. Right. We knew you were there. Mm -hmm. And we can watch a whole lot of actions being performed while you were there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's why she was trying to give you a every out on the whole booby thing right okay now is there any reason any reason at all even from whatever angle because you know it takes a little bit to clear up those videos right but any reason why your penis would be out no nothing nothing okay now and doing this, you know how St. Exams work, and I ain't got to explain about DNA or anything like that. Right. Now, I didn't say you had sex with her. Right. Okay. But getting a blowjob, okay, that is a different story. Right. Okay. You see my concern here. I'm just listening to you, sir. I know, but I'd rather listen to you and you start talking. That's all I have, sir. Are we are we gonna get something from the same exam? Go with the same exam. Do, and do you understand that you don't have to full blown ejaculate to get something out of the same exam? Right. We can get skin cells. We can get pre ejaculate. We can do all that and still get DNA. Right. And or we can did your penis go in her mouth? No, it did not. Okay. Because DNA will clear it up. And here's the deal, too. I, it, we can fall on the sword okay. and say I screwed up or something. But if we say we didn't do it, we didn't do it, we didn't do it, and then the DNA comes back and says he did it, then we have a huge problem. Right. We're here to give you the chance to fall on the sword so we don't we don't want a huge problem we don't want a huge problem for you right it's this is time it's time if you're if it touched her mouth if it touched the inside of her mouth for one second two seconds three seconds you got to tell us now look right. there's there's a huge difference there's a huge difference in between a rape being forced mm -hmm. and, and some old girl who wants it right okay we've had plenty of that we, we, we get that we know that Okay, but there is, there is there is a big difference, okay? Right. But I'm just saying, you know, these videos ain't helping, and um, we're going to do the comparing and all that. Okay. Okay. But uh, it's not looking good so far. Okay. Okay. And I don't want to see anybody go down for something that right. there was no force. Right. Not 
I'm not seeing any beating or anything like that. Right. Okay. I'm not seeing that big time, uh, big guy forcer type thing like what we do see. Right. But. But know. if it was a get out of jail free card, that happens. Right. And we know that happens. Right. What Detective Davis is referencing is that it's well known that sometimes law enforcement officers will use their authority to coerce citizens to perform sexual favors in return for being let go, or in her words, a get-out-of-jail-free card. Detective Davis is utilizing the read technique tactic of getting a suspect to confess to the action using more favorable circumstances. In this instance, she's framing it as, it wasn't an assault, it was just receiving a favor for giving a favor. And but we gotta know that. We gotta know that versus, you know, he made me, I didn't want to, blah, blah, blah. If it's a get out of jail free card, then that's a different story. And we've worked enough of them, okay, cases that it didn't happen. The problem is, is where we're at right now, mm -hmm. okay? And that's why we wanted to hear your version of the story. Right. Whether we just go off of what we see and, and I mean, whatever this tests out as, right. okay? But. So I'm, I'm sticking with my story. I, I'm okay, okay. <laughs> On the video, are we going to see her boobies? She didn't see her boobs. I didn't see her boobs. Okay. Are we going to see her pull her pants down? I didn't see her pull her pants down. Okay. Are we going to see your penis out? No. Nope. Are we going to see your penis go in her mouth? No. Are we going to get any DNA to that? No. Let's switch up for a second get another girl okay mm -hmm. you probably don't not necessarily going to remember the name but her name is terry morris okay black female um supposedly you promised her a ride to the city rescue mission this ring a bell no you did a, a traffic stop with her uh she thought you ran for warrants the clicking you drove her around Mm -hmm. no. name doesn't, I don't recall a name like that. She's claiming the same thing. The exact same thing. Detective Gregory reveals that there is now another accuser named Terry Morris. As the case continued to develop after this interrogation, a total of 21 accusers would come forward, stating that they too were a victim of Holtzclaw. And here again, for whatever reason, things are pointing at you again. Right. Now this was before even this incident this morning. Traffic stop, not logged in, all that stuff. This morning? No, no, this has been a little bit ago. Okay. This was here just a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Okay. Anything? I don't, I don't. Do you remember, do you remember stopping? I don't recall a name okay. of Terry Moore. Well, I wouldn't remember a right. name. How about? Black female downtown, city rescue mission. That's why I was trying to jog your memory. I haven't been to a city rescue mission. I didn't say you made it there. <laughs> uh, have you I've promised been, anybody a ride to the city rescue mission? I haven't mission? asked any, anyone to ask me to the city re uh, rescue mission. No, a, she didn't have to ask you. Did you offer to take anybody to the city rescue mission? No, I don't offer anyone because I don't like going there. To be honest with you, I don't. Don't like dealing with what? I don't like going over to the city rescue mission or anything like that. How about any stops of a person just walking, even just downtown? Anywhere downtown? No. You, you I don't, know. I don't, in Spring Lake, I don't go downtown. Besides, if I go to class in, um, and not class in, but Western or Maine to Valero's. To or the up. jail. Or jail. Or headquarters, right. property. Right. right. And you just, you just don't remember doing any of those type of stops? No. Not in the last month or so. No. Do you run everybody that you come in contact with? Majority of the time. But you didn't run old girl this morning. The 50th. The 50th in Lincoln. No, I didn't. I didn't run her. The other girl that he's talking about is kind of making the same allegations, and that's that's weird. Yeah, that's it doesn't look good. I mean, I mean that, that's it doesn't weird. look yeah, it doesn't look good. So, no, I don't. 
No one with the city rescue mission. Never been asked, never been offered anyone to go there. Um, do you give people rides sometimes? I do give people rides. Do you? I do. Because sometimes I'd be like, I am not a taxi cab. I'll go but rides. Have you always been in this your new car? I mean, have you ever had it down? Uh, in the initial statements given by Janie Liggins, she stated that the officer she came in contact with had an all-black squad car. These were still fairly new at the time, with only a handful of officers being assigned the new all-black Ford Taurus police interceptor, while the standard in the department was still the black-and-white Ford Crown Victoria police interceptor. This is a detail that Detective Davis used to narrow down the list of officers that Liggins could have come in contact with that morning. Drive him another. I've had a wreck on, on 27th and King where it was down for a little bit. Um, starting out, was in the pool cars. But this is my take home car. But I'm saying the last month, have you been driving any of the older cars? Mm, no. Black and white versus the solid yeah, I think black. this is the only car I've been in. Have you ever driven a black and white car? I have, yeah. When when was that? Right out of the academy. The regular Crown Vic. But when you when you wrecked your car and it was down, what did you drive? The Crown Vic, black and white. A, a black and white one. Right. When was that? A year ago, maybe. Oh, okay. Okay. How long have you had to take them for? Mm, probably a year and a half. And it's been this one? This one, yeah. So you wrecked it six months after having it? Uh, somewhere around there, that yeah. That sucks. Yeah. Was it your fault? No. Uh, well, that's good. <laughs> what do you think about all this? Um, heads out here. Um, I want you to take this exam and get get this over with. Um, I feel embarrassed because going to the station. Um, well, heard, that's why we try to handle yeah, it. Right, 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 right. And I've heard of officers going through this and and whatnot, and that's something I don't want my rep to be, you know, about. You know, I'm, I'm a good officer. I I don't. That's not me. It's not me. Are you circumcised? I am circumcised. So, just asking. Do you have pubic hair? Uh, yes. Well, I mean, some people manscape, as you call it. Right. Do you groom? I groom, okay. yes. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> you got any identifying marks around your penis? Or? I don't. Just a plain old penis, huh? Plain old penis. <laughs> plain old 14 incher. <laughs> I don't say about that, but. <laughs> See, you should have. You just had your opportunity. <laughs> I just don't know what to. What to think? Would you take a polygraph? Uh, yeah, if you want to take a polygraph. I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to think of a solution. Do you know how slow DNA is? I don't. I do not. Slow. Um, you'd be willing to take a polygraph on it? Yeah. Okay. Let me call Get that set up. You, uh, that's kind of delving off different, but you married? I'm not married. Girlfriends? Uh, here and there. Kids? No kids. You're big. You on roids? I'm not on steroids. A little bit. I've been always, which I don't care. I've always been a big. I'm not the dope police. I've always been a big bone guy, football, athletic. You you got more than big bones. You got big muscles too. I work too. out all the time. Do you? I do. I Where got, do you work out? At a four star gym, off of May, about 63rd. Yeah. No roids at all. No roids. You do all the protein drinks I drink and all a that lot stuff. Of protein. That can damage yeah. your kidneys, just so you know. <laughs> so. If you did roids, would you tell us? I would. I'll tell you. I mean, because we don't care. I have nothing to hide about that. I've always been a big guy. I always work out all the time and whatnot. When was the last shower you had? Uh, took a shower before work. When you went home, was anybody home? Um, my girlfriend was home. Did you, did you, did you get live late? with her? Huh? No, she doesn't. Okay. She just stayed. Did you get late? Uh, Messed around, yeah. What's messed around? Sex? Uh, 
I guess. We were all adults. She, we almost had sex, and she was tired. What'd you do? So my penis went around her vagina, and, and then maybe went a little bit in, and then she pushed me off and said, no, we don't want to. I'm tired. I was like, okay. That's kind of mean to let it get that far and then stop. <laughs> so, so that's when you got home? That's when I got home. How often do you have sex? Uh, about once a day, if that. You guys have sex once a day? Yeah. How old are you? 27. Oh, uh, well, yeah. How much you jerk off? Uh, maybe once a day. So you have sex once a day and masturbate once a day? If I, yeah. What'd you do when you got shot down at home today? Uh, you really got to relieve that. Right. That's, <laughs> I know. That was, that was before work. That happened before work. You masturbated before work? Yeah. Not, did you just go roll over and go to sleep when she didn't give you yeah. any? Yeah. You ever been accused of anything like this before? I haven't. Not in Michigan? No. I have not. You weren't one of those football players. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. No, I was not. Holtzclaw was an accomplished athlete nearly his entire life. He played football as a linebacker in high school, setting a school record for 25 tackles in one game. He also played linebacker at Eastern Michigan University, where he graduated with a degree in criminal justice in 2010. After graduating, Holtzclaw unsuccessfully attempted to get drafted into the NFL. Soon after this, he joined the Oklahoma City Police Force. Anything, anything you can think of that will help us help you. That's it. I want to step out. I want to go test. I want to get clear of my name. I want to get clear of my Because we, you know what? If this is a bunch of false allegations, then I want it cleared up too. Right. And I'll help you clear it up. And, and, uh, it's this. We don't talk. It's not swarm. It's swarming it's, around Spring it's, Lake. It's, it's out it's there. It's just in the department too. So and it's I mean. not swarming all over the department. We in sex crimes, we do not run around and go. Guess what? This won't work. I'm gonna work. We don't do that. It's right. not professional. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's around Spring Lake. Right. And everybody's gonna know that we pulled you down here. We right. tried to do it as discreetly as we could. Right. But. And like I said, there's officers that. I'm not saying being with the hookers is right. But it happens, right. and it's life. Right. And if if that's what this was, lay it out there for me now. Right. No, it wasn't. No. Wasn't she? Would did she offer anything? Don't take me to jail. She, Don't. I'll do this. I'll no, do this. Did she, she offer you anything? I think she was nervous, like I said earlier, and maybe a little flirtatious, but nothing crazy. She never offered anything no. in exchange for you not taking her. No, she's really worried about going to jail, but and, she, and you sometimes know, she was, they'll say, "Hey, I'll give you a hammer it. if no. I don't go to jail." <laughs> no, no. She didn't offer that. Mm -hmm. She was nervous, like I said. She cried earlier. Did she cry as soon as you stopped her, or after she was in your car? When did she start crying? I think in the car. Yeah. What made you let her go? Number one. To reason. be to be honest, yeah. I want to get home. Then why'd wanted... you pull her over? It, <laughs> like I said earlier, I just cop swerve DUI, and if Holy I had if I had, if I had, if I, had I know if I had to do it, I would have done it. But I didn't think that she was past the legal limit. That's just, I mean, I just would avoid that if I, did you at any time, you said you picked her up around 50th and Lincoln. I mean, when you it's saw just, her swerve, right. did you at any time, were you always behind her or did you pull up beside her to maybe see who was in the car and then no, pull back she, behind her? She was at 50th and Lincoln, swerved, and I was behind her, so I felt behind her. And then wait you, till were you ever away. beside her? No. What, what lane was she in? The mouse house lane. Close to the curb? Lane. Yeah. And Did you ever pull up beside her on this way and then fall behind her? No. I because was, sometimes, I was directly behind her about here and she swerved. And you stayed behind her? And because I sometimes her. I would pull up beside to see, okay, how many people am I dealing with? 
No, in the car. I didn't do that time. I've done that before, but right, you didn't do that. I didn't do this time. Huh? No. Could you tell if she was the only passenger? I couldn't. It was dark tinted windows. I couldn't tell. So you didn't know how many people you were walking up on. No, I didn't. Did she roll down her window as soon as you? She had the back left window rolled down, and then uh, the how she didn't never rolled it up, and the, I think she opened the door, if I recall. Okay. And was it pretty quick that you took her to the back, to your car? After a couple questions, license, you know, insurance, typical thing. She just gave me her little uh, Oklahoma identification card. And that's why I okay, investigate attention, come back to the car with me. Okay. Yeah, because that gives you a reason to search if you need it. I mean, what would you have done if you had found some dope or a gun or something? Like, there's, I mean, as officers, if you find a little dime bag, it's, you know, you can squash it out, you know, rub it out. With gun, obviously, different story. And you logged out when? Uh, I don't know the exact time, but off prospect, when I about hit prospect, and probably about 50th, I logged out. Do you guys, because it's done different now, do you have to go to the station and check all your stuff in? Uh, hand, inter shift. hand interactivity uh -huh. and all that one night. Do you do that every night? Yeah. Not, then, sometimes uh, you don't go to a buddy, here, turn this in, I'm no. going home. And then lieutenants clear us and say, you guys can go home. Okay. So you didn't, and what, do they make you wait till straight up two, or do they cut you majority, ten to two? Majority or? of the time, sometimes it's just up to the supervisor. Okay. The majority of the time. And then you left? Right and, that, yeah. And then I headed up 50th. Going northbound. How'd you get to 50th? Just down Prospect? Spring Lake Station, take a right to go north, off Prospect, take a, uh, take a left to go westbound on 50th. And then picked her up at Lincoln. Remember? About there, ish to the east, where I saw her. Any other traffic out there? No, that was the only car. What about during the time that you had her stopped for like 15 minutes? Any, was there a lot of traffic going by? Was there any traffic going by? I think there was cars I could see as far as coming going west towards our direction and whatnot. But nothing like real crazy driving by us all the time. Just about. Yeah. Hang for a minute. Let us pow wow. Your phone. I wanted to they looking in your car. Oh, okay. But they wanted you to have your phone. Okay. All right. So we have no misunderstanding because and maybe I didn't key in on some things. I want you to you turn in your activity card. Walk me through it all again. Holds Claw will go over his recollection of events once again, but on this second go around, he will be led into a line of questioning to specifically give more details around the searching of Jenny Ligon's person. While it may seem like he's repeating himself, pay close attention to what areas pressure is being applied towards. I turn my activity card, I leave out of the station, I go take a right, go northbound, I prospect, all the way to 50th. About that time, I turn off my computer, I'm done for the night. Had left to go westbound on 50th okay. from Prospect. About a block down, I see a Grand, Grand Prix in the outside lane. I was in the inside lane, directly in front of me. Car swerved at that time. I kind of fall behind of it. Then initially it lighted up until we hit about 50th and um, Lincoln. I didn't want to light it up at, at, the, at the stop sign, so I waited until it go forward. And just lit it up just to the west, and then that's when I made the traffic stop. Okay, walk me through the stop. Made the traffic stop, made contact, gave her license, insurance, normal protocol. Mm -hmm. She gave me her identification card, and then at the time I said, a valid driver's license. She said no, so I was like, okay, I had to sign to step out of the vehicle. Did she have insurance? Uh, she didn't bring you to get okay. insurance. So I just saw the ID, and I was like, yeah, valid okay. insurance, be valid license. So I brought her back to the house the house, the car, and then that's when I... Okay, what side of your car? The back right. 
The passenger side? Yes. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. So as I was walking her down, I was like, you have any weapons or whatever? I always ask people when I set up a car, whatnot. At that time, I powder her down, whatnot. Um, ask her to lift up her shirt. No, no weapons on that I could see or anything like that. Put her in the back of my car. Ask her what the deal is. She's going to Ann Arbor on the northwest side to visit her daughter, I believe. Um, and then I'm like, okay, why were you swerving? Why are you late at 2 o'clock at night driving and whatnot? What's the deal? Um, she's like, I'm just going to my daughter's house. Okay, so why are you swerving? She's just like, I got nervous or something or whatever the deal is. So I ask her, okay, and I go, is there anything inside of the car I need to know about? And then she says, there's some juice in there. I was like, is there an alcohol in the juice? She says, no. So I was like, anything else inside of the car? She's like, oh, you might just find some pills and whatnot. So I ask, go proceed and ask, can I have consent to search the car? She says, yes. Go to the car, I did a quick search, nothing out of, you know, didn't look up being carpets or anything like that. I did a quick search, looked under the seat, um, looked through her purse, uh, saw the pills, smelt the, the juice. I didn't smell any alcohol on the juice. Uh, when I looked at the pills, I kind of quick glanced to make sure it was her name, whatnot. Okay, we're good. Went back over there, okay. Hey, what's the deal with this, blah, 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 whatnot. And she's like, I'm just trying to go see my daughter. And then I was like, okay. I don't want to go. I don't want to take you to jail. I'm tired. I want to go home. And then she's like, okay. So basically went from there and I said, I'll follow you. Um, follow you around. We got in her car. She took it forever. So I pulled out, did a U-turn in front of her. She followed me where I could see her in the rear view mirror. We went over and I went northbound on Broadway Extension. She went 44 and West. And that was it. Did um, why'd you log off? I always log off. Aren't you supposed to stay logged on until you get home? I always log off. Do you keep your police radio on when you go home? Uh, uh yeah. Okay, I, think, so you're I, listening I, think, I think I have my radio on, yes. Do sometimes you turn them off? Yeah, I do. Sometimes. That's not good officer safety. I'm, what if you drive by an armed robbery? That's true, too, yeah. I mean, or what if you drive by an officer that needs backup? You're that's right, right there and you didn't hear it. That's right. I'll give you my, my mommy lecture. <laughs> So you always log off when you're done? Majority of the time, yes. Okay. When she, when you bring her to the passenger side of the car, here's her car. I'm, I'm not a good artist either. And here's your car. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you bring her over here. The back, right. Okay. Passenger side. Is this where you're having your conversation the whole time? The whole time when I touch step out of the car, I always talk to him when you had anything on you. So as we're walking here, I'm like, okay, anything on you. Okay, um, you care if I just quick pat you down, whatever, just go ahead. Put a pat her down, no have weapons I fell or anything like that. I'm like, lift up your shirt, about right there, nothing. Okay, keep walking, walking. I'm still checking her out, making sure everything's good. And I'm anything your shoes, no. Try to take off her shoes, I'm like, you're good. So get inside the car, and that's when I proceeded to ask anything on okay, board. Okay, so she got inside the car. She got inside the did car. you go get in the car and talk, or did you stand there with the door open and talk to her? I think I did get inside the car for like a quick minute and just see what's the deal. It's just talking to her and whatnot. And that's the time where I think I smelt the alcohol just a little bit on her. But nothing for, I didn't stay in the car forever and whatnot. I just talked to her for a quick, brief minute. And then you went up and searched? Yeah, I got consent to search the car, asking if anything's on board. She said, juice. I was like, any alcohol in the juice? No. Anything else I should know about before I go inside the car? I'm gonna find it. She said pills. Okay, I was like, all right. I didn't ask her specifically where the pills were. Right. So I go inside the car, look down in the front left seat, quick search and look at their car, because anything I said, smelt the juice, not as smelling the alcohol, went through her purse. First I saw bottles of pills and whatnot, but just quick glance, okay, that's her name. You know, went back. Now, when you went back, did you get in your car or did you go back over here? I, I can't, I, I don't know if I went into my car or went back over there, to be honest with you, I don't know. Did you, sometimes, like I said, we open the car door and we stand, car doors open and I'll stand right here and talk to them because they're sitting right here. What? I've done that, yeah. Did you do that yeah, with her? Yeah, I did that, yes. yes. So you're having conversation while she's sitting in the car right, right there? Right, yes. Okay, but you don't remember if you got if, back in here? I know, I, I believe I did get back in the car, that's when I smelled just a slide of alcohol on That was pre-search? I, I, I believe so, I believe okay. so. I don't know. And I'm trying to get this so we can match it up with right. the video. Right. 
Um, after you search, you come back over here and talk to her. Right. Okay. Any cars passing by then? Maybe a couple. Could she have missed? Because if you're standing right here and you're a big guy. Right. And she's sitting right here. If she goes like this, whoa, she's going to be looking right at your penis. Okay. But Could, it was just talking. Did you, Let me ask you this. Did you ever get a hard on while you were talking to her? Because she could have. I don't, I don't think I got. These pants don't fit the greatest. Right. And if, if you get a hard on. I'm gonna be able to tell you get a hard right. on. Right, and I don't. I'm pretty positive I didn't get a hard on. Didn't get a hard on I'm when you positive. talked to her. Pretty well, positive. you do you still just get boners because you get boners? Yeah. You do. Yeah. Okay. So, have you ever got a boner on a call? I'm pretty sure I have. Okay. Pretty sure I have. But you, but it's not something you would remember. No. I mean, I, I would remember if I got a hard on right. talking to somebody. And I, <laughs> as, as a guy, it happens. That's not something. That I know. Happens, I know. So. Well, you're not 50 yet either, so <laughs> happens because of your age. Um, could she have missed? Could you have got a hard on and she saw it and it? I don't think I got a, her. I don't think I got a hard on, but like I said, she was already nervous and crying and whatnot. I already told her, I'm like, hey, <laughs> I want to go home. I'm done with my shift. I don't think you be worried about. It. If nothing's on board where I need to take you to jail, you're good. I'm not worried about no state driver's license. Did your pants come unzipped, unbuttoned, anything while you were standing right there? No. CSI is processing your car right now. Right. And when we stepped out, they found some pubic hairs right in here. <laughs> Could they be yours? No, that's not, I didn't pull my penis out and do anything right there. Did she? No. Do you think they could be? No, it's not. No, nothing of mine. Your pubes couldn't be. No. Right there. No. Has your penis ever been out? Do by your I'm car. A, while I'm working, no. Not working. No. Have you ever had sex in the back seat of your car? I have not. Because I mean, some people do. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not saying forced sex, consensual sex. Right. So your penis has never been in your back seat. Mm -hmm. Is it possible any of this DNA is yours? No. It's not. That's, I would like to go, go at it. Not my DNA. Are those pubes going to be yours? No. No. Are you worried about it? I'm, this whole situation I'm worried about. I mean, <laughs> I've never been here, never been questioned, um, especially in the, you know, like a room like this, you know, obviously I, I'm yeah. worried about the whole circumstances of the Earlier, you, you gotta everything. understand, we kind of see different things, okay? You seem a little extra worried whenever you talked about seeing her, we talked about seeing her boobies. Mm -hmm. Are you sure she just didn't flash you? I can't, she did not fly. I, I want to say I can't recall, but I'm pretty positive she didn't fly. Well, I see a pair of titties. She, go, I'm she went see like this, but nothing as far as I'm going like crazy looking. Lift it, lifting the shirt. I'm, no. How far did she lift it? She lifted it at first when I patted her down. She was like right here to like stomach line. Did you see her belly? Maybe some fat rolls or something. I don't know, but nothing. Right, but like I mean, I could you just, see skin? Yeah, I saw skin, yeah. Yeah. Well, she's older. Were tits hanging down, and you I, saw the bottom I, of her tits. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's dark. I don't know. You like older women? I don't. Tell Tell <laughs> uh, she's twenty-five. Okay. What's the oldest lady you've slept with? Uh, maybe twenty-nine. You ever slept with a black woman? I have. In high school, I have. Do you have a race that you prefer? I don't. I don't. You just like. I'm half Japanese, so I'm not really. I was going to ask you if you were Asian. Anything, so I'm not really discriminating. Who's yes. Japanese? Your mom or your dad? My mom. Is your dad huge? How'd no. you get so big? That's what everyone asks me. That's because, I mean, I Asian genes are kind of small. And that's why I thought I was adopted at first when I talked to him, but uh, my dad's small, 5'9. Uh -huh. Japanese people are small in general. So. Wow. 
How tall are you? About six two. Wow. He got big. Does Daddy have some big guys big on his side? He's a family of four, three. Well, he'll be with him with four brothers, but I think his generation, his uncle was pretty tall, and I think that's where I got it. I think we've covered a lot of sex questions. Yeah, is there anything? You got any sex questions? I don't. <laughs> you got anything of us? I don't. I don't. I don't. I just, <laughs> this whole, this whole situation and uh, it's just. It's kind of scary. It I is guess. scary. And I, I don't want, I don't want my rep to be, everything's about, in law enforcement, I'm three years on. I know that, but everything's about your rep. Absolutely. And I don't want this to fall on my rep. Actually. So. Why would she make, because when, when a, when a woman says something, something like this and they go through a same exam and they get you didn't give her a ticket so she's not getting out of a ticket you didn't arrest her because we get those when they go to jail oh, i've been raped and have to work those stupid things because right. they think they're going to get out of jail right why in the world would she make this up i don't know i was she was cooperative she was nervous like i said earlier crying i told her not i'm not worried about no stage driver's license i wasn't making she said uh, she was crying yeah, and I, I don't, you know, at times as an officer, you might make a threat to be like, oh, I'm going to take you to jail, um, but let's try to get you some way to get in the car or something, you know, if I can get right. in or something, but I'm, that wasn't the case. I wasn't threatening her. I wasn't. Did she ever ask you if you were going to shoot her? She did. She was talking about a pistol all the time and talking about guns and whatnot, and I'm like, Calm down. I'm not, I'm not going to shoot you or anything like that. Did she think you were going to shoot her? Maybe. I'm like, what? And I even asked her, I think I asked her, what's the deal with you and cops? Do you have a bad run in with a cop? When questioned about if Liggins mentioned anything about a gun or being shot, Holtzclaw's memory is suddenly refreshed and he confirms that, yes, that this was part of the interaction as well. This seems like a peculiar thing to not remember upon first recollection. Holtzclaw remembered that she was crying, he remembered that she was nervous, but didn't remember her repeated worries about Holtzclaw having a gun and her fear of being shot and or killed. That was it. So you, you had to tell her? That's like, calm, calm down. down. Did you ever say, I promise I'll let you go? I did. I said, I promise I'll let you go. I'm not worried about no state driver's license. Is there anything inside that car? Did you tell her you were going to follow her home? I did. I did. But then when she took forever to turn around, I got annoyed and I was like, screw it, let's go. But I saw her in the rearview mirror and I saw her take 44 when I went northbound on Broadway. Where did she live? She said she was going to sister's house in Ann Arbor. Were you really going to follow her? That's far. I was going to drift off and you know, I might really follow her, but I'm just going to drift off and book it. She's good to go. So I didn't think at first she was drunk. She wasn't over this, the legal limit. But my thought of alcohol is on board, but nothing where she's DUI. Anyway, those pubes are going to be yours. No, they're not. Please. Go. I, know, I, know, I know we're going to test it. It just takes any way your skin cells are going to be anywhere on her mouth. No. Skin cells from your fingers. No. Did you touch her body anywhere other than with the back of your hand, Pat searching her? Just Pat searched her and that was about it. Didn't touch her face or anything. You got to no. understand, we've had so many people sit in that same chair right. that tell us all day long, I didn't do this, I didn't do this. They promise on their baby, on their mama. Right. They promise to God. And then they come right back. We get back these tests and you can't get out of it. You right. know, I mean, once you kind of get basically kind of locked into something there, there's no talking about it right and that's why we would try to give a person every opportunity right because if you know, the tests come back you ain't coming back in here because we're here we have a woman that says about you know basically being sexually assaulted right okay and right. we're calling it by force and all that big difference between that and a hookup right and to come back if, if there's something there and you say no and she said it was that you know, you see where we're going. Right, I do. And that's why we always try to give every angle. Right. We wasn't there. 
Right. So we just got to go off of everything that we see and, and have. Mm-hmm. Okay. You understand? No hookup. No hookup. Not even a little hookup. No, not a little hookup. No booby. No booby. I saw no breasts. Did she see your penis? No. I'm just trying to think of anything that she could have misconstrued. Or why. Why did she go to all this trouble? I don't know. Did you do anything that pissed her off? And that's what I'm saying. I don't think I did anything when I was talking to her. I don't know, wasn't rude. She was cooperative. I wasn't at a point where I'd be like, okay, you're going to jail or something or whatnot. I don't think I made any like threats to make, you know, to get in the car, like I said, or anything like that. When we first walked into the office, first time you saw us, okay? Right. And we just kind of started talking. You brought up this traffic stop. Because the major came in, or the captain talking about 50th and Lincoln. And, okay. When when he came and got you? Yeah. What did he say to you? I think it was the captain, and then we were in the major's office, and he said something accusations of 50th and Lincoln. No, we, and I didn't hear any rumors going into the station or anything. I was just going to show up and line up like I don't really do. When you, when you came in, you said something about. Wow, why are all them guys here? I don't think I said that. I was shocked. I'm, you said that like, in the car, not to, you were like, when I saw everybody, I was like, whoa, I wonder. Because I was. Did you think we were there for you? I was just, what I saw that, and I knew from Academy, I'm like, what, what's going on? Did you think it was for you? I didn't know. I didn't see it. I've never been in trouble like this before. Never got accused of anything like this or nothing. But it scared you. Yeah, I was scared. Okay. If I walked into the station and saw some sex crimes detected there, that wouldn't scare me. It wouldn't scare me if I was just in the briefing station. But since I went in the room and was told to go in the room, and I saw then your you got, sex okay. crimes. Okay. That's what went on. But I, I saw you when you walked in the door. Did you see me in the captain's office? I saw you, but I saw Captain Plants over like that. Did you get scared then? No, Captain, I, I'm good with Captain Clifton. Are you? And just say, hey, what's up all the time. So it wasn't a big deal to me like that. And when he told me but to when you got called in the, the yeah. then you were like, whoa. Yeah, what's going on? What's your phone number? 580. Did you exchange phone numbers with this lady? I did not. Did she have a phone? I did not, no. talk about hooking up later? No, I did not. Is she somebody you'd hook up with? No. Assault in the manner that's been presented by Detective Davis and Gregory isn't always about the aspect of seeking gratification through physical pleasure. It's also about the power dynamic. Those who believe in Holdsclaw's guilt believe that he had targeted disenfranchised demographics within the city. The specific group that is believed to be targeted is poor black women who may be involved in selling their bodies and or suffer from some sort of addiction. Proponents of his innocence believe that he had no reason to do this. He had an objectively attractive girlfriend who shared his love for the gym and a healthy lifestyle. He had previously never shown any propensity for this kind of behavior. There is a shared belief, however, that after going undrafted into the NFL, he may have felt like some sort of power or control was taken away from him. But this is purely speculation, and even if he did feel that way, it is yet another leap to come to the conclusion that this was a motive. What do you think? Did she want to hook up later? I don't know. I, she didn't give me any clues like that. Did she she was... asked for your number? No. I'm just trying to think of every conceivable possible thing for this. Run down through on your search of her breasts again. I exactly how that went because even that and her pants. Was she standing or sitting when during that time? Patted when I got to the vehicle about right here. Um, said, can I search you? At, more by the front door. The front right fender. And then I patted her down, boom, boom, boom. Lift up your shirt right here. Boom, no weapons. So you said lift up her shirt, your yeah. shirt. Yep. 
What if that would have, she would have gone, Whoa! Then I would have been, I would have told a supervisor or something, and I'd be like, to get that off my back, you know? I mean, it's not what I meant. For like you, you searched her with her, where was her, was she facing you or facing away? Facing away. She's facing away. Right. And how are you seeing if anything's falling, if she's facing away? If it'd fall, I'd see right there. You'd see right there, but don't you usually have them turn face towards you and sh do uh, a shake out? Officer safety, I always have everyone face away from me. You can't see what you can't hit. But you don't know if the weapon's there or anything? I, as far as I did, quick pads, search, lift up your shirt, no weapons on board. You made a mention earlier about her pants. Uh, she did what with her pants? As far as that, it was in the, in the back seat. Nothing. She had tight pants, and that's about it. But how did did you have her do it? Like a cursory movement around her her belt line, anything like that, or any shake? No. Did you tell her how to how far to raise her shirt or to do the the shake with the bra, anything like that? I think she did the shake with her bra by herself. I didn't say to do any of that. As far as the she pulled it out, up, go like that, that. Yes, but as far as that's on her. As far as right here is when I told her to lift up the waistband. But she was faced away from you the entire time that her her chest was right. she was checking. Right. Right. So when she lifted up her shirt, her back was to you. Uh, I think she was facing me. I was, obviously because I'm going to look at the front end. You said you might have saw her, her belly like a fat roll. Right. So you would have been to the side or to the front? If the time when she faced me is probably when I would have saw a fat roll or skin. But it wasn't for the, the check? No. No. Did she try to pull her pants down? No, no, I recall. Um, moved around the seat and that's about it. Nothing else. But when me. she was standing? Did she try to pull her pants down? No. no. Did she do, you said she kind of did she like did this. this. Did she ever do anything down here? No. Because at that time, if she asked me, do you want, you want me to show you? I was like, no. No, I'm good. She did ask if? Yeah. What'd she say? I said, no, I'm good. When was that? Where was everybody then? I think that was in the car. Okay, I don't think you said that last time. I think I did. Yeah. You, maybe you did, I, and then maybe I just missed it. So she was in the car and said, do you want me to show well, you? Well, she did the, the shake thing, and she was like, do you want me to show you? I was like, no. Show you what? Just as, I guess she's trying to mean as far as just a boom or something, if anything's in her bra or anything like that. But that was after you already had her lift up her shirt right, a little bit. because that was at the front right fender. Okay, okay. And like I said, I'm, I may have missed that or got confused with what talked about a lot. So she asked you when she's sitting in your car, do you want me to show you? Right. And you said no. no. Did she attempt it? No. And that was after the... After she was kind of doing like this? Yeah. A thing that kind of concerns me is everything you're telling me is dead on to what she says. Everything. Except... The sexual stuff. Nothing was done as far as that. Nothing. She smell of anything else besides alcohol? Just a little bit, like I said, when I was in this car seat. But I asked her if anything else was on board. She just said pills. Did she smell, though, like I, weed? Not, or? not PCP or anything with the stink that I would smell. Right. I didn't smell any weed inside the car. I didn't smell any weed on her person. Um, that's about it. Any questions? <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just bombarded with questions. But I know. Do you have any? Do you want to bombard us with any questions? I don't know. <laughs> it's, 
No, I don't. I don't have any questions. I just we might. Uh, far as the, you said you take the lie detector test. Right. Detective Gregory recalls from earlier in the conversation where Holtzclaw said he would subject himself to a polygraph. Now asking Holtzclaw to confirm. Polygraph results are inadmissible in court, but there are psychological advantages to using them. In this case, Holtzclaw willingly agreeing to a polygraph without hesitation would bolster the surface-level confidence of the investigators finding him truthful. Polygraphs in general are used to help navigate where the discussion in the interrogation room should go, helping investigators to hone in on potential topics or details to assist in uncovering the truth. And that navigational assistance begins before the polygraph even begins. For example, a suspect's reaction to a proposition polygraph. Do you have any extra job? Is there a time when you can't take a lie detector test? No. That you can take it at any time? I can take it at any okay. time. You're not scheduled for vacation coming I'm up? I'm not or? scheduled for vacation. Okay. What, where are you at on your days on right now? Uh, this will be my second day out. Okay. Wednesday. So you're Tuesday to Tuesday? Tuesday to Tuesday. You take any testosterone booster? I do take a pro hormone, which is over the counter, uh, BYN, Beyond Your Nutrition, which is off Memorial and Pan ish. What's that do to your nuts? Yes. You know how they, they, say, say, they say it shrinks your nuts. Does it? They say they shrink your nuts. Are your nuts shrunk? I don't think they are. <laughs> I mean, well, you would notice. You know your ball size. I don't. I don't think they have shrunk. Does it do anything to your penis? No. Nope. You having problem getting it up? I don't. You having problem ejaculating? I don't. It's called BYN. BYN, Beyond Your Nutrition. Is that the name of the store or what you take? It's off the store. What's the stuff oh. you take? It's uh, called Methadrol. Does it make you hornier when you're on that? Supposedly science says that it's supposed to increase your testosterone levels. Do you so feel? So which, which in case, I guess, makes you more. Wait, how long have you been taking that? Uh, on and off for maybe a year. So, do you think think you want it more since you've been on that? I mean, if you're doing it once a day, that's a lot. Plus jacking off. I think. Off. Plus jacking off. From my age, I don't think that's a lot. <laughs> Was it that before you took this stuff? Yeah. I think I have a... I think that's probably why I'm a bigger guy is because I have higher testosterone. I'm an athlete. And, and do you think you have a high sex drive? Yeah. Do you like oral sex, normal? I like it all. You'll take it, you'll, okay. Do you prefer vaginal? Uh, would you rather get a blowjob or do it in the hoo-haw? Do it, me, you take it in the No, <laughs> you give it in the hoo-haw or get a blowjob? Uh, sex. Sex? What about anal sex? No, I don't like no, that. Okay. Well, let's step out. I had some questions about some midgets, but I guess I'll leave that alone. <laughs> Have you ever had sex with a dude? I've never had sex with a dude. Have you ever wanted to? I do not. I do not want to mess with a guy. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. A couple of things. We pat a while and then we leave right. you. That gal is talking about that Terry Morris, the one, uh, the other, the other person. Okay, yeah. you're saying the same thing. Okay, you say it was downtown. She was walking. Okay, so mm -hmm. when I say a stop, that's you know you see you're right. like a voluntary contact. Right. Okay. Here, think of a cross between this is one picture and this is her. She look familiar? No. No. Mm -mm. Now you stopped her for sure and ran here okay. on a different day. It was May 8th, okay. okay? You sure she doesn't look familiar at all? Now, when you stopped her, you know, over at the Liberty apartment area, mm -hmm. okay, that's where you stopped her on May 8th. Okay. Okay. Now, does that ring a bell at all? No, it doesn't. Okay, all right. Now, you ran her then, okay? Now, she says that uh, you stopped her later on, like I say, later on in the month, there's more kind of a downtown area. Does that ring a bell at all? I don't recall any of those pictures. I don't recall any of that. 
Okay. I don't ever go downtown besides if I go to the gas station or county or off duty jobs where, where you work off I don't duty I don't have an off duty I'll have a courtesy officer at my apartment okay so besides the Bur uh, Bolero and, and maybe the Viper here and there maybe okay that's what they are where you on duty but you're running Viper out of Spring Lake out of Spring Lake okay all right um you ever with your car you ever go visit anybody any buddies anything like that or no shopping anything no okay what, why would, uh, and granted, you're not even recalling her on the May 8th, right. okay? Um, but that's, I just wanted you to have a frame of mind of who's who's making this, um, these statements against you. Okay. And it's the exact same thing, too, you know? Um, you stop her, have her sit in the back seat, run for warmth, then you have her get her out, mm -hmm. okay? Unzip the pants. I mean, on and on and on. We can go through. I mean, it's it's to a T. It's of, exactly of this the same. Yeah, I don't recall any of those people. I don't think I recognize those people. What well, if you this is the same them? one. This is the same one. I'm just showing you a picture of how, how she's changed. Yeah, okay. this has changed. Okay. That's the same girl. It's two different time periods, but she looks kind of in between. It's the same girl. Okay. Okay. Still nothing, even vaguely. She's always on the northeast side. You know, twenty third and, and Kelly, thirty six. Kelly. Uh, All right. But she's. I mean, she described you to a T. Okay. Okay. And like I said, I mean, it's everything. Everything. You know, you don't remember her even. Even forget what she's saying. You don't remember her having offering a, a uh, ride to the. To the shelter? I run in contact with a lot of people, and especially at Liberty Station. That's where I patrol. That's my area. Okay. It's Charlie 3, but my sector. I go there all the time. Where is that? Just about 26 in Lindsay area. So I, I don't bring anyone to the shelter. I don't. If I was asked, I'll be like, find another way. I don't have yeah, brought you, anyone to the shelter. It's a good way to get somebody in the car. Yeah. Do you remember? having a contact with a female like that age okay uh, that you know said she was going from a shelter from a rehab center um, even saying you know you take her I don't know. driving her around anything like that I don't know. okay do you ever every time you have a female in the back do you go 10 14 or you just kind of zip on over no I know I usually to all the times if I do it's you're supposed to say policy, you're supposed to let okay. them dispatch. No. Who cares about policy right now? Because we don't at right. this point. Do you do the mileage and do all that? Or? <laughs> Can't hear there. Sometimes you don't? Sometimes I don't. Okay. okay. Sometimes I don't. Know. This is going back to this other deal. You're saying about 15 minute traffic stop. How long do you usually take on traffic stop? Just on average? <sighs> Maybe 20 minutes. No, that's, that's a it. long time. Maybe. Now, Maybe. 20 minutes, and I'll give it to you. Just even doing the gang stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. 20 minutes. Now, that's going to be some 800 time, right? 800. Okay. Searching the car in detail, all of that. Okay, so doing all of that, all the mm -hmm. running, waiting in line, and even on a search. Now, the question I have is we got a lapse of time here, so I'm kind of get a better handle on where the time went. You're talking about 15 minutes, mm -hmm. no 800, no running on the computer, you shut it down. Mm -hmm. And you, even you said it was just a quick little search of the car. Where's the rest of that time? Just talking to her. About just, what? Just see I where mean, you're she's... going, uh, trying to, actually to try to get her confess, are you drunk or not? Like, are you been drinking? Because I could smell it when I was in the yeah. car, but I can't really get it. Well, what if she said, yes, I'm drunk? I probably would have took her down. Did you do any I didn't tests? Do any, I didn't do any sobriety tests, just from inside the car smelling it and that's about it but emotional even that, maybe but even so. that that would that'd be just within a, a minute or two I mean it used to be DRE so that I know how long those questions right. will last so then you switch on over but, but nothing nothing okay so I didn't hear a lot of drunk questions you know like uh, how much have did you, you been drinking mm -hmm. oh, mainly it's just have you been drinking try to get a confessed See anything inside that juice? No. Um, why are you driving so late at two o'clock? I don't know. Where are you going? 
going to Arbor uh, on the west side. Where you, who are you going to see? Just trying to just talk to her. But, okay, uh, right there, those questions maybe took 40 seconds. 15 minutes? And you said five at the car. So then we got 10 of a lot of questions. Right. Okay. I mean, you tell me I wasn't there. I mean, well, obviously, then, I don't have any audio. Then, I'm, 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 then that's what I'm saying. Roughly on a traffic stop, take about 20 minutes. It was the quickest traffic stop, about 15 minutes. That's your quickest traffic stop? No. Okay, you're a slowpoke. I'm not, I don't, I don't really get 1090 at all or anything like that, but I, I take but, my time sometimes. But you didn't write her tickets. Didn't write her ticket. You didn't write her. Didn't write her. You didn't even put yourself out. Didn't put myself out. How up. could you take 15 minutes on that? Just talking. I must have been talking, so. That's it. I, don't, I can't see her wanting to talk if she's crying and asking if you're going to shoot her and all this. I don't see her being real forthcoming with the conversation. Whether my questions or whatnot, that's it. I, I mean, you don't seem, I mean, I don't know how you were out there, but just kind of talking with you. I mean, you seem real laid back and everything like that. I, I don't, yeah. I've never got the impression of just kind of an angry type cop. We know some, right. you know, that, uh, yeah, you might would ask, but I, I don't see that question coming up of, of you. Right. And you're not saying she was drunk or high or, I mean. I didn't think she was drunk over legal limit point oh eight. And like I said, I didn't, I didn't make any threats to her. She, she was just emotional because I made mean, the gun deal or she saw a cop and what she was just, deal? she said, you got a gun, so I was like, calm yeah, down. Duh, everybody is. Yeah, and so I guess she brought that up, and I was like, calm down. When she asked about the, you got a gun, what what point did she ask that? Uh, she asked that right when we were searching the passage and when we were in the back of the car. So she brought twice? it up twice? Twice. She just says, you got a gun, or what? Yeah, and it starts crying, and I'm like, don't get emotional, it's okay. Did she ever say... You shouldn't do this. No. Or I can't do this. No. She just says, you got a gun. You got a gun. Are you going to shoot me? No, no, I, I, no. I don't think she never said that. No, you said you said last time. You, I said, did, okay. she, did, she, well, add, did she? Maybe she say said that, but then I was like, do you have any bad runs in with the cops? She's like. No. That just doesn't fit. That's just weird. And that's what I, I mean. That's I'm kind of in there too. I don't know if I don't think she was drunk, but I know there's pills on board. I don't know if I don't know. So what was it what, to the do, point? Do you carry a Glock? Oh, you I don't do, have it on. Yeah. I don't even pay attention. Said the the one you got in the academy. Yes. What else she taking besides that pro hormone? It's about creatine. Uh, what in the creatine? Just creatine, monohydrate. Uh, I don't know exact ingredients in it. Um, what I'm saying is it is it in something? I mean, is it like an intro workout, a pre workout? Yeah, pre workouts are in creatine. Okay. Um, but give me the names of what you're using. There's a lot of supplements I'll take. How much uh, money you spend on supplements? It's, Cost a lot. Supplements cost a lot. Start rattling them. <laughs> uh, C4 pre workout. Um, no explode. Um, let's see. Uh, Domatize has some. A condense. Domatize has what? Even for your protein? They have, I take their protein. Um, You taking any injection? No, no. It's pro hormones. Okay. You got anything to offset the pro hormone stuff? Uh, liver, liver pills. Because I guess it's bad to take oral, so I take liver pills. And that's about it. Multivitamins. Med sports multivitamins. And that's about it. All this stuff, does it make you, do you, do you ever get mad? I don't, 
then aggressive that all is uh, a myth is it it's a myth that's just based on the guy's personality I guess why not Have you ever roided? Have I ever did steroids? No. I've been around it in college. NFL, I've seen guys do it. College, I've seen guys do it. You didn't do it? Never did it. How come? I started as a true freshman in college, so I got random tested by NCA. NCA tests for all that uh, as far as steroid use. And you get tested in college just for street drugs. So I didn't know when randomly they could do it. I didn't Why want weren't to put, the other guys worried about it? What happened if I they don't got think caught they, on it? They didn't care. I, I cared. I didn't want to. I started as a true freshman. I didn't want to do that. I didn't. It wasn't about me. I was a big bone kid. I didn't need to get stronger. I didn't feel like I think that would come natural. I didn't feel like I needed to get faster or anything like that. What happened if you got caught doing it in a random test? The NCA would suspend you. You'd be uh, dead. But like anything, just I mean, there's always something before they ban it and stuff. Yeah. The old Andro days and stuff. Yeah. So. Did you do the supplements and all that then? Yeah, but I had to, back then you had to be a little careful as far as talk to your team doctor, what's in this, is this FDA approved? Just don't have that risk of actually, you know, getting tested for a small ingredient and whatnot. So you don't think 15 minutes was too long? On that traffic stop? No, I. Went and nothing sexual went on during nothing, that 15 minutes? Nothing sexual. When you said you were going to follow her, but she took too long? How long is too long? Where you turn off the lights, okay, go ahead. Wait just a little bit, wait a little bit. Okay, so. I had to U-turn and went. 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute? Maybe a little bit longer than a minute. What, you, what was she doing? Could you see in the window? I, could, I just saw her just pull up a little bit, kind of stalled and slow creep up. And I'm like, what are you doing? And go and I'll follow you. But then I just, boom, took the U-turn. Went north on north, uh, 235, roughly extension. We're going to call tomorrow. We can't get a hold of the polygrapher today okay. and um, get that scheduled. Uh -huh. And I'll call you on your cell phone uh -huh. and tell you when it is. Uh -huh. Do you know where the, it's at the training center? Did you? When we did the camera, yeah. 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 Okay. Then I'll call you and get, we got to get that all set up. And uh -huh. I'll call you and get your schedule. Bow wow one more time. <laughs> Any questions? No, I don't have any questions. Can Daniel come? Maybe you can ask you this. It's a little toasty in here. It is a little toasty. We can just open your pants. These are the pants you wore last, last shift. Uh, yes. It is? Yes. Okay. About your underwear? No. Where are they at? Uh, in the wash. They're in the washer? Washer. Washer. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you need your pants. Okay. I did very different. Okay, we're trying to figure out a way to speed this on long. I don't know what it's been. Um, What, what would you, we're trying to figure out whether just to figure out. It's, it's you guys, on. whatever you guys want to do. You guys call. I don't know. It's your guys' call. I don't know. If you want me, I'll drop them. Yeah. Okay. okay. You don't want to like some Tybex pants or something home? Does that matter? I don't, I don't care. Whatever. Okay. Whatever. All right. Who, who all was home when you got home? Uh, 
have my girlfriend, Carrie Hunt. You live with anybody else? No, I don't. Is she a policeman? No, she's not. Uh, Carrie Hunt? Carrie Hunt. What's her number? Uh, can you go through my phone? Yeah. As much as I don't want to get her involved. We're not going to tell her what's going on. Uh, but we are going to. tell her whatever you want to. Yeah, we're not going to. Uh, her number is going to be 918. Does she work? Are we going to? If we call she does work. Does she, she works work at now? normal 8 to 5 hours, Monday through Friday. Okay. Where does she work? At a Crescent Oil Memorial in MacArthur area. Around right there. Uh, we're getting those tie to go. Okay. Don't call her. <laughs> okay. You created some more work. Fixing right. to go. <laughs> I just talked to Karen. Okay. She said she was asleep when you got home and you did not try to have sex and you did not have sex. I did try to have sex. She you. said you didn't. And I asked her, could you have been asleep and you had kind of wall, no, and she said no. She, you did not try to have sex. As much as I don't want to involve her, I tried to have sex with her and she was asleep. Carrie goes to sleep pretty early, about nine, ten at the late. Okay, but it, she would know if you try. I'm a woman. I know. And, and my husband comes <laughs> home in the middle of the night and I'm like, are you kidding me? I've been asleep. You said you twirled around her vagina I did. and you put it in a little bit and then she said, I'm tired. No. I did. She would remember that to tell me. She, maybe she you. said you did not try to have sex. <laughs> and it's more personal because it's Carrie, but I did try to have sex with Carrie. I did. to say I mean because it just looks like I just caught you in a lie and now I don't know I, what to believe I'm telling you. I don't know what to believe okay. because you tell me this I go to verify it she tells me the opposite and now I'm, now I'm wondering what you're telling the truth about maybe because she's she doesn't know what the heck's going on no she doesn't I didn't tell her and I'm glad but the text is calling her any other officer asking her a question like that I know. she's maybe scared and I don't want to involve her, but she's involved that's because my you, girlfriend. That's like you need her involved for you, right? But now she's given the story that you're not given. I'm, I'm telling you, I try to have sex with Carrie, my girlfriend. She and is going to remember like, your weenie twirling around her hoo ha. You remember that? I don't. I'm, I'm sorry. You. I don't care how much of a sleeper you are. You remember because it pisses you off in the middle of the night, and you go, "Are you serious? Don't yeah. bother me with that." I, Maybe she call her and ask her if she's a deep sleeper. Because there's multiple times I've tried to do that. Multiple times we've had sex. Multiple times she has pushed well, me Well, you told me that you have sex every day, and she says you did not have sex today. We didn't have sex today. No. We didn't. Well, you said you have sex every day. Mostly every day, yes. So if I call her back, is she going to tell me that you'll but have sex every not, day? We did not have sex, but recently, but, mm. mostly all every day, yeah. Um, I... I, I'm a woman and I know what it feels like to be woke up for sex and I don't like that and you remember it and and I don't you, I don't believe you. Detective Davis lets Holtzclaw know where she stands in this investigation and that his words are falling on ears that have already heard their own conclusion. Daniel's girlfriend, Carrie Hunt, was contacted by investigators and she denied any sort of intimate contact between her and Daniel. Regardless of what he says now, the lead investigator has already drawn a conclusion of guilt, which can be especially harmful for a number of reasons. One of the especially worrying outcomes of that is that the investigators could now seek evidence that supports the notion of a suspect's guilt instead of evidence that supports the truth. To the outside observer, the idea of Carrie denying any sort of allegation of impropriety, in this case, the act of initiation while she was sleeping, could have been to protect Daniel, but in this Oklahoma City interrogation room, it's the furthest thing from being a possibility. As the investigators mentioned before, they wouldn't tell Carrie what was going on, so she would have no idea about the basis behind the line of questioning. How would you respond if you were Carrie in that moment? Detective Davis will call Carrie again shortly, but Davis never returns to discuss the call. 
I'm telling you the truth. I'm sorry. I tried to have sex with my girlfriend. I did. I don't know. You're a dude. Does your wife get I pissed could, off if you try to wake her up in the middle of the she night? She had white white thong on and and a t-shirt. And okay, you talk to him. I'm gonna go call her again. Okay. Because right now, I don't believe it. Take the pants. You want me to bring them in? Yeah. In a plastic bag. Yeah. I mean, a brown paper sack. Okay. Don't start yet. <laughs> and that's probably her destiny or whatever. I don't She's like, what? And oh, I wish well, we we're not gonna involve her, Carrie. Well, we're not gonna <laughs> tell her. You're gonna have to explain whatever the situation is. That's what happened. You got any questions of all this? <laughs> oh, you, I'm you gonna guys. attack now. I'm just feeling. Oh my God, bless. I want DNA. I want everything. I want to get it done. We're, we're gonna put it to the front of the line, okay? Get it done. I can tell you, it usually takes a long time, but because of the situation, we will put it at the front of the line, okay? Yeah. I mean. Usually on the stuff we do whatever we can. Here is shorts and a shirt. I don't know if the shirt will fit in a sack. Before I call Carrie. Yes. Shorts and a you shirt. tried to have sex with Carrie. I tried not to have somebody my else. girlfriend, yes. That was in my bed, yes. Do you ever cheat on her? No. So it's only Carrie right now. Carrie. Okay. All right, man. CSI enters the room to take Holtzclaw's uniform as evidence for processing. Unknown to him, this is the last time that Daniel Holtzclaw would ever wear a police uniform. Pants in this bag and just put the. Unless you want to keep the shirt on, I don't know. I don't know if this shirt's gonna be big enough for you here, big old boy. I was gonna get a Tyvek, so I don't know where these came from. Well, can you think of anything? Will it be okay if I tell my family about this? And no, you tell it's not okay. It's it's your life, man. Look, we usually have to spend. We spend as much time, anytime there's an allegation, okay? Trying to clear up the matter, right. one way or the other. I just okay. don't want my girlfriend to be involved, you know? That's something. <laughs> I try to have sex with my girlfriend. As bad as that sounded, that was bad that sounds when she's asleep, yeah. No, no, you're fine. Hey, I try to crawl up in my wife all the time. Hey, she shoots me down. I mean, she's probably just imagining her just being all nervous and whatnot, you know? Just, Well, you can get home and kind of explain everything. So what goes on from now? There she is. Jesus. Well, you're headed home, obviously, because you need some pants. Why don't you go ahead and get dressed then?
Yeah. Well, we stay here. Yeah, I stay there. Okay. We're, getting, we're, we're really done with you. Okay. Just hang back. Can I can I message her and say I'll I'll because she's probably blowing on my phone. Go Just like heck, I'll You're talk fine. to you. You're fine. Daniel is given the opportunity to contact his girlfriend, who is undoubtedly reeling from the strange phone calls and questions she is receiving from Detective Davis. Hey, baby. Babe. I need to... <laughs> I need to tell you what's going on. It's crazy. I said... When, I'm, I'm basically on my way home, and I'd like to talk to you what's going on. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, give me... Uh, they're going to give me a ride, so I don't know, probably 10, 15 minutes. Till I... Get 15, yeah, around there. I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes around there. Yes. I don't know. It's I. I gotta tell you, it's uh, it's crazy. It's just uh, it's nuts. I gotta. So uh, I love you, okay? I love you. Holtzclaw waits patiently, certainly realizing what would be coming next. A mandatory leave from duty pending the results of the investigation. Hey, Dan. Hey, man. Oh, it's hot in here. Yeah, it is. Hey, uh, until this investigation gets all completed, what's going on, we're going to put you on administrative leave of pay, okay? Sure. Just part of procedures, you know, and they got to do this until it gets all taken care of, yeah. okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you this to sign that you're receiving it. And I'm uh, going to give you a copy to take home. I want you to read it very carefully when you get home because there's some details to other people forget to read. You know, such as you got to check in with me on every Tuesday morning before 9 o'clock. Okay. Call me at the station and just make sure I know who you are and where you're at. Yeah. There's some things we got to take from you. We already, I think there's firearms already in there. Yes, sir. And you're in the deal. Um, do you have your... Um, y your shirt in here, we'll get your badge off that. Yeah. Is that the only badge you have? Yes, because the other badge is upstairs because it was, uh, we got lost in our foot chase. So. Okay. The other one's upstairs. Upstairs where? Uh, with Susan, um, uh, chief Okay, assistant. so you haven't got a replacement yet? I haven't yet. You have not? Okay. okay. Well, we need to find out about that as well. So you just have the one on the desk and whatever. Let's go ahead and get that from you. Okay. And we're going to need your radio too. We'll just kind of check it off as we go here. Yeah. So we got the badge and the radio, you know, that radio there. And Lieutenant Gregory's going to take you home too, get you right home. Are you still up on North Main? Yes, yes 14, sir. 14, 200? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, we got the badge. And then do you have your commission card and entry card with you? I do. Okay. And this, the seal missing is from, from the last yes. foot chase thing, yes, right? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So we have the entry card and we have the... Clean card. Clean card, card, entry card. card. Okay. Is that your entry uh, card? This, is this, I'm sorry. What do you yeah. have here? Okay, is that all? The uh, fleet card is commission okay. card. We'll and take all this that. Is okay. entry card. We got all that. And here, um, do you have anything else besides your firearm? Do you have a, um, a shotgun? I do have a shotgun. Is it in your vehicle? It's at home. It's at home, okay. Yeah. I'll get that. He'll grab that okay. when he goes with you and grab that. Um, he'll probably grab your radio charger as well. Okay. 
and any spare batteries you have there. You don't have a taser. I don't have a taser. Nothing like that. No, um, no. We have your, I have your keys to your car. Do you have any um, keys to the station or anything like that? No, no. Okay. All right. Then that's going to be it. Okay. I'm going to let you sign this that you're receiving it, okay? And I'm going to give you your own copy, okay? So you can read it. Now, you can't wear your uniform. Of course, we have your, all your badge and gun. You can't work extra jobs. can't drive city vehicles. So. And then, you know, those guys will be in touch with you for any further follow-up with that, okay. you know. And if you, be sure to read this, like I said, because, you know, if you go out of town, you got to call and let us know no, first. Okay. If you go, um, if you're going to go out of state, you need to get permission from us. Okay. Those type of deal, but read it very carefully. Okay. That's your copy right there. And I'm going to witness it. Okay. I think that's it. Arthur. Okay. And you'll take um, Let me, I'll take the, um, yeah, I'll, I'll take that in the badge if you want to. Okay. Right. I'll, just, I'll just take that. If you can get the. And I'll get, and I'll get the things that he has at home. Yeah. And I, I'm, let me call you back. I'm pretty sure that um, Melvin's working tonight. Okay. And he can just let you in my office and stick it in there. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm almost positive he is working okay. tonight, I would, I would guess. And he's going to take these things home? Yes, he can take those home. You can take those home. That, those items with you, you can take. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Arthur. I will probably bring those things back. Okay. Now, um, okay. As we present the events after this interrogation, we will try to stay objective and present what we found to be verifiably factual. We stand on the side that there's enough information publicly available to give credence to both sides of the scale. Both sides present compelling arguments that, by their own, could be enough to prove innocence or guilt. But justice does not operate in a vacuum. We must take all the information and come to our own conclusions. And we can only ethically make those conclusions when we meet one specific criteria that they are beyond a reasonable doubt. After surrendering his OCPD uniforms, badges, cards, guns, radio, and keys, Holdsclaw was placed on indefinite paid administrative leave and was released without any charges at the time. After further investigation eventually turned up a dozen additional complainants, Holdsclaw was arrested two months later on August 21st, 2014, and was originally charged with 16 counts of sexual abuse offenses, later increased to 36 total charges. The detectives then reviewed Holtzclaw's automatically recorded history of running names through the department's two databases, looking specifically for people who had been checked out multiple times, and they contacted those people. 21 total accusers claimed that they fell prey to Holtzclaw. Seven of the 21 total accusers admitted that they had lied. One of the seven admitted false accusers, Shanice Barksdale, was convicted of making a false report. An additional one of the seven was a male whose statements did not lead to any charges against Holtzclaw, but they also did not recant their statement. One of the 21 total accusers came forward after charges against Holtzclaw had already been filed and court proceedings were underway. Of the 13 remaining, each individual accuser's statements resulted in multiple charges, totaling up to 36 charges brought before the court. Of the 13 accusers, charges stemming from five of them all led to not guilty verdicts. At least one guilty verdict was returned from each of the remaining eight accusers' charges. Daniel Holtzclaw received 18 guilty verdicts and 18 individual prison sentences as a result of those verdicts. Holtzclaw was ordered to serve those consecutively, totaling a 263-year term in state prison, effectively guaranteeing that Daniel Holtzclaw will die in prison. Twelve of the total 21 accusers and the one accuser that came forward after proceedings were underway filed civil lawsuits seeking cash settlements from both Holtzclaw and Oklahoma City. The parties championing for Daniel Holtzclaw's innocence actually do have some valid counter-arguments. One of the questionable circumstances surrounding the investigation into finding potential victims was the leading nature of the conversations that Detective Davis had with the people she contacted. Instead of probing for answers, potential victims were asked if they were assaulted by an officer. How this and the various other questionable investigative methods impacted the case is up to you to decide. The lack of physical evidence exists as well. There was no fluid DNA found on Holtzclaw's person or clothing, only skin cells. 
all of the DNA samples could be explained through contact transfer. In addition, the prosecution failed to really present a true motive. However, the same question always comes back to mind. Why would Janie Liggins lie? Detective Davis and Gregory mentioned that there was another accuser, Terry Morris, whose previous statements matched almost exactly to what Liggins said. However, the jury found Holtzclaw not guilty for the charges stemming from Terry Morris. Sherry Ellis, the woman whose accusations resulted in a total of 62 years for Holtzclaw, repeatedly stated that the officer who she was assaulted by was a black man. But it always comes back to Jenny Liggins. She had no reason to lie. There was no public knowledge for her to potentially use as a basis for unfounded claims. She had no reason to exact revenge, and the charges from her accusation resulted in a guilty verdict. Oklahoma County District Judge Tim Henderson, who presided over Holtzclaw's criminal trial, resigned in March 2021 and came under investigation after two female prosecutors and another woman accused him of sexual misconduct. Henderson presided over numerous high-profile criminal cases in Oklahoma County. Many of Henderson's cases that involved the female prosecutor, such as the case against Holtzclaw, are now under scrutiny. On February 2, 2022, Daniel Holtzclaw went before the parole board. He was unanimously denied. On September 21, 2022, attorneys representing eight of the 13 accusers who filed a joint civil lawsuit filed a joint stipulation of dismissal with prejudice. In effect, the lawyers for Holtzclaw's accusers are asking a federal judge to dismiss the lawsuit they brought and to dismiss it with prejudice. Holtzclaw's family continues to rally behind him, seeking to right what they believe has been wronged. The alleged victims of Daniel Holtzclaw continue to march on, fighting to be made whole, advocating for police accountability and justice for the disenfranchised. Both sides remain steadfast in their version of the truth. Daniel Holtzclaw is currently incarcerated at the Lexington Assessment and Reception Center in Lexington, Oklahoma. With a current expected release date of January 25, 2279, it is likely that he will remain behind bars for the rest of his life. <laughs>